Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back after the break. You are joined with Qamar al Islam, your host for today, and with us in conversation with Sheikh Suleiman Ghani. We'll be inshallah taking your question. And if you do have anything in particular related to Hajj, Qurbani, Eid, or Arafah, please do feel free to call in to the studio directly and to and the telephone number to call in it's 02035150769. If you would like to text us on WhatsApp, then please feel free. And the mobile number is 0742. Two three nine eight eight three three. Alternatively, you can email us at ask at imanchannel.tv. And to all of those, thank you again, once again. In fact, um, those who are watching through our social media platform, that is Facebook page or, in fact, our website. And this program is broadcast live from the studio of Channel S, watched on Sky 757. This segment, inshallah, will start with your question. And the first question will be taken from the WhatsApp uh, through text messages. Now, Sheikh, if I can start, Assalamu alaikum, regarding Qurbani. If there are four people living in the household and all four are working, does one Qurbani cover for all four or does everyone have to make a Qurbani each? Qurbani is wajib on every individual adult Muslim and he has during those days 10, 11, 12 Zul Hijjah because these are the days where you sacrifice the animal. Uh, if he has a money enough for him, like we know, we say, how do you calculate your nisab of gold and silver? Yes, sir. 87.48 grams of gold or 612.36 grams of silver. So if he well comes in his possession, so it doesn't have to be for the whole year. If it comes in his possession and he has enough, then every house or every adult should do their own animal sacrifice. This is generally the Hanafi school of thought that is you, every person, like you cannot use one animal for the whole family. There may be other schools have different opinion on this. So I am of the opinion uh, that every, even though you are living in one house, as long as you can afford to sacrifice the okay. animal, each one should do their own. But it has to be adult. Adult, okay. If someone cannot afford, if he cannot afford, and during those days, then Qurbani is not wajib upon him. Okay. If someone wants to do it on his behalf, who cannot afford. It is allowed. It is allowed. Yes. Okay, now another thing, uh, we always have some challenges, people, especially um, those who are within the subcontinent region. Uh, there's a concept that instead of giving Qurbani here, we send our money uh, at the con back at the country of origin. Now, mm -hmm. is that something permissible or is it best to sacrifice where someone is living with their family? Highly recommended that you sacrifice in the country that you're living in. There are people who also need it in this country. It's not like uh, it has to be all the time abroad. And it's more important, remember, it is not mm -hmm. It is not even the blood and the flesh that reaches Almighty Allah Ta'ala. It is really the taqwa, it is really your, the action to commemorate the okay. sacrifice made by Ibrahim alayhi salam. So if somebody is doing it abroad, it is permissible, it is allowed. But, you know, it is more about you getting the very special connection, understanding, better, deep understanding of what is the hidden behind, behind Qurbani. So now people send their money, gone, finish, eat, celebration, entertainment, family, but no really feeling of what exactly do we mean by Eid al Adha. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for clarifying. But also sometimes some may have the concerns, Alhamdulillah, we may be living in this country well or financially, uh, but maybe perhaps some of our relatives, extended family might not be in a good position in terms of finance. So some may think, okay, let my cousin, brother or my own brother or sister and so on and so forth, let them have that share of happiness. I mean, this will be on the intention because uh, one can always send money, send for them, you know, uh, well to purchase there. But when it comes to Qurbani, it has to be done on that specific okay. dates and time. <laughs> so it will be valid to send abroad. There okay. are people who are definitely in need of it. Uh, there is no, but I'm saying, you know, we are losing that real spirit of animal sacrifice. The actual lesson. The actual lesson okay. behind it. Imagine. We are able to take your family and show them the livestock, but obviously so maybe reviving the sunnah, basically reviving that sunnah. Mm, okay. And in some parts of the world, they are allowed to do their own animal sacrifice. That's true. Jazakallah khair for clarifying it. Mm. Now we move on swiftly to the next question, and it is: Is it true that if you are sacrificing animal for qurbani, and you happen to feel sorry for the animal being sacrificed, then the meat of that particular animal is haram for you to eat? 
What do you mean when you say you feel sorry for the animal? Are okay. you fighting for animal rights? Uh, let's uh, let's 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 broaden the horizon now. Um, one of the angles that we have brought in is animal right. Perhaps the other angle could be Muslims because the society that we live in, the current climate that we live in, there are a lot of uh, discussion about animal rights, a lot of discussion about uh, uh, humanity, a lot of discussion about animal welfare, vegans, vegetarian, etc., etc. Okay. So. It could also be possible, perhaps, when you're working in a professional environment, there's discussion happening about um, people are going vegans these days, people are going vegetarian. So they can, an, an influence can work, and perhaps the discussion might lead someone to feel that I'm being cruel towards the animal. So what are the rights of the animal? How would you answer that then? Or the animal rights? And, uh, I mean, as a human, it, it feels like they okay. may say it feels a little bit of uh, uh, the act of the, the, some may use the word cruelty or cruel uh, mm. is, uh, or um, so, animal. Yes. Yeah, so here we have to look at it from this point is what are the, you know, Allah Ta'ala has given rights to the animal. Why? Because life in itself is sacred. So when permission is granted to sacrifice an animal. Certain animals certain animal yeah. then those animals they have to be sacrificed in a very special prophetic way we say you know the sunnah of ibrahim alayhi salam now when we look into the quran the quran has given us the beautiful lesson of why do we sacrifice the animal mm. so if almighty allah ta'ala had sent down the animal the ram to be substituted yeah. in place of ismail alayhi salam so we have to sacrifice that animal because permission has been granted. But that animal will only be haram if the name of Allah is not pronounced. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْكَ Do not eat of that which the name of Allah is not pronounced. So this clearly shows and it's clearly a reminder that life is so sacred. Animal have rights life is precious therefore when we sacrifice that animal we have to pronounce the name of allah because allah is the greatest bismillahi allahu akbar the lord the creator has given us permission to sacrifice the animal and we, we sacrifice it in the name of allah so therefore when you look at animal and you know the the the, the method of slaughter and why the blade should be so sharpened why it should not be in front of other animal? Why the animal feels less pain when it's done the, uh, the prophetic way? When even the animal is understood, you know, when you look at the original way of animal sacrifice, you will find that, you know, as soon as the animal is sacrificed and the blood oozes out, you know, everything is it's like saying less painful for the animal. It is very, so all these criteria and the method of slaughter is amazing. So that is the beauty of why Eid al-Adha is called Eid of Sacrifice. Okay, now just going back to the uh, question now, if he feels sorry, d should he think that it's haram? Not a haram at all because that is the, the lesson is that when, you know, when we, uh, in, when I was growing up in South <coughs> Africa, our father used to purchase the an animal mm. and his name is Ibrahim and it just reminds Mashallah. me, Ibrahim alayhi salam is the, meaning the lessons we take the animal was purchased and then we should see it. If, it, if it's a cow and if it's a sheep now, every day as children growing up, we should get excited because the Eid is coming and we're looking forward for Eid al-Adha. So there is a special attachment and bond and you also get, you know, you, the animal becomes healthy and you feed it well. And now this is where Ibrahim alayhi salam had to sacrifice his beloved son Ismail. Can you imagine how the father has been tested? He loves his son. Mm -hmm. So, but he had to call, execute the commandment of his creator, even though the test is so difficult a test. When Allah that is sacrificing his son. All that is the great lesson we take from Eid al-Adha. That imagine that which he loved so much, his beloved son, and Almighty Allah Ta'ala is testing the father, Ibrahim. So that means there is a lesson for us to learn because we, in the world that we live in, we have attachment to our houses, our children, our wealth, our businesses. So what lesson can we learn from that? Just to add a little bit there. 
Yes, and that is where the great lesson is that Ibrahim is ever willing, you know, he does not hesitate to execute the commandment of Allah. He doesn't wait for a moment to lapse behind or between the command and the execution. It's immediately, you know, no hesitation. That is the lesson. How can we, we won't even able to reach the level of Ibrahim Khalilullah. So Allah has made it out of his mercy and grace that instead of sacrificing your son, animal is sacrificed. If that was then order, can you imagine, we all would fail. So this is the mercy of Creator. And hence, you know, it is, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُّكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So whenever we're doing the action, it is our the salat, our sacrifice, our living and dying should be for Rabbul Alameen. It says only everything should revolve around one message, around one purpose, and that is to gain the... Uh, the uh, the taqwa, the piety, is that correct? Yes, indeed. I mean, even for the animal sacrifice, you know, for every hair that is any on the uh, animal, you get a reward for it. Even if there is wool and the sheep for the fiber, you get a reward for it. Zakallah khair, Shaykh. We'll be continuing our discussion, and we're discussing about Qurbani, about Dhul Hajjah, and taking your question. And this is the program where you are able to ask those questions, and this is the perfect time. Inshallah, do stay tuned with us. We'll be right back after our short break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.